All right, thanks for staying with us now. Referencing a Daily Post publication from the 20th, um, the Ocean State Governor Ademola Deleke stated that his administration is committed to local government autonomy in the state. He noted that the local government autonomy is in line with the principles of federalism and it gives government to the grassroots. And they could drop this hint during the ongoing ministerial briefing in the state. Now represented by his deputy, Kola Adewusi, the governor held the local government administration, um, gov local government administration in the state has been bastardized by politics. Now, according to him, local government needs to be granted autonomy as this is the grassroots government through which the people get the dividends of democracy. And at the state, uh, uh, sorry, at the same time, granting autonomy to the local government is in total accord with the principle of federalism. Now, Adelike also assured that his administration would bring normalcy and take steps to correct the aberrations of the past. Now, considering the state of politics today, what are your thoughts um, on Ocean State governorship, um, the upturning of Governor Adeleke's you know, governorship, and also this local government autonomy? That's the conversation we're having today. Now, please, let's hear your thoughts. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So I'm going to bring in Kulin Awal in a minute. I just wanted to hear your thoughts, um, Diola. What do you think? Um, I mean, I've heard this in different quarters that local government autonomy is what we need, and True. I see it every day. So before I actively started participating in conversations around politics, so when people used to say those things, I didn't understand. Mm. I couldn't get it. But now with every day, with every news that I read, with every engagement that I see, I see that the truth is local government truly must have that autonomy True. they must be empowered because everything about the state rises and falls on the local government because those are the ones that are closest you know to the people so your inner streets all True. of those things your drainages and all those things are supposed to be controlled by the local government so now i'm just wondering as a governor shouldn't you be happy that somebody's trying to take the burden off your neck so that you you just empower them to do their job i don't know why state governors are now like against well, you know and our states lagos state is the one championing it <laughs> but let me hear your thoughts quickly you know what they say power absolute power is very intoxicating mm -hmm. and um having control over the funds you know of the local government is also something so for a governor who probably doesn't even understand what local um, local government autonomy even means you know he doesn't see the need he or she probably doesn't see the need and then mm. just feels okay you know what i can do everything i i have absolute control and so for me i would say that it's important that even us as citizens we need to get to a point where we educate enlighten and empower Mm. such that we understand what the tiers of government, you know, what they do, the role of the local government in governance. So that even when exactly. we are... When no. elections like this come up, we understand that, so, listen, the you. governor is very far from us. Mm -hmm. The person we need to make sure, you know, get there to do what we want is the, lo is the local government chairman. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we have... Um, um, when, when we focus on that, you know, we would begin to want to get the best people in, into, you know, into, to, power. To, to, into power. So yeah. I, I think that's... Um, so sadly, the person that is even fighting for the local government mm -hmm. autonomy is one that they have upturned <laughs> his <laughs> as well. But let me bring in Kule Lawal. He's an entrepreneur, idea generator, TEDx speaker, and a patriot. He has a keen eye for opportunities based on his experience in the politics um, political space, working with non-governmental organization and the federal government. Now, he's passionate about Nigeria and um, is what we would call a detribalized Nigeria. So he considers his boundaries to be limitless and is really focused on changing the Nigerian narrative in political participation. And that's why we had to bring him in today because we don't have a better guest to have this conversation with. Kule, thank you so much for always honoring our invitation whenever we call you look dapper this evening we've not seen you this year happy new year happy, happy <laughs> new year wow. and it's, it's always great to be on ways you know i consider ways as family and this is a conversation that's very close to my heart and i Absolutely. look forward to a great discussion because you are one person that helped me to see 
the picture. So mm -hmm. Kunle was part of the people that educated me on, you know, local government and how, so even if certain things are happening, how we mm -hmm. can hold the local government um, accountable. So when that story broke, I remember sharing it to you and I was saying, Kunle, we have to talk about this. What came to your mind? So with all the good things that have been happening and all of that, did you kind of like preempt that that was going to happen? Um, you know, eventually, I, I've always believed this, um, and which is first and foremost, um, the first handshake of democracy to the Nigerian is the local government. And we've kind of underplayed it, so I'll start with a little example. Etiosa, which is where we are in, is considered probably the most intelligent local government in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and also the most advanced infrastructurally, thought process. But uh, now here's the problem. A, a TOSA in a local government election does not have participation up to 7% of its voting population. Oh my gosh. And meanwhile, when you also check into a TOSA, you would now find out that a TOSA has a federal allocation, not state, of about 503 million per month. It begs to ask the question, um, what exactly have we been asking for or yearning for? Now, there is a common misconception by people who are in power. And I really blame you know, the initial 99 sets because we've had local governments more functional in the military rule than we have in a democracy. If I remember the first few police cars which you got which looked mm. flashy were given mm. by Algon, which is the committee for local government chairman. But you know, coming into a democracy, you find their funds being seized and you have an argument over their autonomy. Now, I know we have a lot of sands in this country, but I find it highly I don't know I, what word to use that wouldn't sound aggressive on TV. But I find it hi highly um, condescending that um, in the constitution of Nigeria, state government is separated, local government is separated, and the argument of local government autonomy exists. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, I don't know whether we want in our constitution, we should write, the president should brush his teeth at 7 a.m. Mm. It is autonomous as by the separations or of red the red chapters red, yeah. as is. Mm. And that is why some, some governors in their immaculate power have decided to think they could sack elected local government chairmen, which have been upturned by courts. Mm. And you ask yourself the question, what do the people even think? So the average Nigerian thinks that local government's powers emanate from the state. No, they do not emanate from the state. They're a separate tier of government. Their powers come from the constitution. Like it comes for the federal, it comes for everybody else. It's, it's, it's highly... You know, impressive to see someone like Adeleke, who's referred to as a dancing governor, to even understand the basic concept of um, governance. Now, let's also push it. And once in a while, I like to advise people in, um, who are lawyers. And, you know, you, you find most lawyers wanting to argue on the parameter that um, we should have state police in this country. Yet, we're being trained by um, Hollywood. I would say Hollywood has been able to inculcate directions into our thought processes. And you see the sheriff trying to, you know, handle matters here, handle matters here. That's local government. So security is also vested, even in the Nigerian constitution, in local government. And we just want to scream state police and we feel that's the, the, the most grassroots who is going to drive the state police if not for the look from the local mm. government? So, so in Nigeria, we kind of think of governance. The simplest way to think of governance in Nigeria is is kind of funny. So, we 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 love the roof, which mm. is the federal government. We love the windows and the blinds and whatever that exists, which is state government. And then we left the foundation of the house to be non-existent. <laughs> so I, d I don't know how, how that house how is that planning has to stand. stand. Mm. Mm. And, and you know, it's, it's a big problem. We're talking about border security. Border security can never be enforced in any country, be it China, US, Australia, countries with massive borders, cannot ex be existent without local government police. At the first time, they're the first parameters in which you we, we see movies you watch uh, county sheriff ah america we love yeah. you'll be watching a movie and you'll be like ah this mayor was bad 
That mayor is local government local chairman. Government. How can we translate it to Nigeria? I mean, should we change our own name to mayor? So maybe it, they will give it a lot yeah. more respect. I, 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 because it, again, so 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 he, let me hear, let me try to break something in. Like I see that maybe that is why the problem is. Well, things are changing now, but the kind the crop of people that went into elections, especially at that local government level before uh, Kunle, they were nothing to write home about. Mm. It was like the downturn. It's just like in Nigeria, right? People that, are, that did not make WAEC or they had to join 10 WAEC results to make one WAEC result are the ones that go to teachers' college. Mm. They're the ones that end up as teachers. They're the ones that teach your children in, you know, in primary school. So that is why even the this, this state of the educational sector has really, really gone down, right? We don't have the brilliant minds. We don't have the clear mind saying, oh, I just want to become a teacher. No. It used to be that I have tried to get a job in an oil and gas. Mm -hmm. I have tried to get a job in a, what's the Grand King sector. I've tried all these other sectors. It's not working. So yeah. teaching is the next line of action, and they go there. That's where I think the problem is with the local government, because it seems like everybody is not interested, is not attractive. It's not this. So how do we even start to correct that? I know things have changed, because I've seen a few local government chairmen that are really, really impressive, right? But how do we even make it a lot more, like make the executives and all of that, make them their positions less attractive and let's start to push that, you know, that foundation yeah. to say, this is the foundation, this is the beauty of this structure. If you want the structure to stand, let's focus on the foundation. How do we get ourselves to start to do that? So it goes back to the fact that Nigerians do not even respect the local government. So... At a, at, and and um, I've advised or been part of quite a lot across different political parties. I've seen that the average educated Nigerian does not want to run for local government office. Now, right. the real change, people feel, ah, I want to go for House of Rep. I want to be, you know, have that, you know, the elitist nature, which is very Nigerian about us. But the truth is, if governance was managed properly, there's no local government in Nigeria that earns less than 130 million a month, which wow. means you are sitting on a budget of at least 130 million without corruption. Per month? Yes. To direct and organize. So it is more, I would even say, more, um, um, how would I put it, honorable to run for a local government office. It's more honorable in the US to be called mayor. Mm. than to even be within the council region. True. But the thing with Nigeria is I don't know whether the House of Rep sounds sweet. State <laughs> House of Assembly, you know, it, it, there's a nice ring to it that we kind of like. And Local we, government charmer. So we, we've, <laughs> in, we don't yeah, so we've imbibed that culture mm. and you rarely see people that are, you know, f uh, yeah. foremost minded participating in such. It's the same way we have left the delegate system in political parties mm. for anybody. Mm. And then when anybody decides to collect $100, $200 mm. and selects a, a anybody for us, then we now, the we elite, now go, now have to scramble within the selection the that was made for us mm -hmm. and then decide to go into an election. So for me, I think the biggest problem with local governments in Nigeria is the fact that we've remained totally and fully politically illiterate. Mm. And because of that, so forget you're in a TUSA, you have 100,000 uh, Facebook followers. It doesn't change anything. Mm. You don't know anything. And you know, it's, it's, it's highly shocking. So having an experience in northern and southern Nigeria, it's highly shocking that I'd actually expect that, uh, you know, somewhere like a TUSA will pull probably a local government chairman that's breaking records. But now, the people of Etiosa, when it's look time for local government elections, they're probably in your resort. They don't even come out. They are probably in your resorts. We're on TV, so that's not advertising resort. When you're in one of your resorts, or that's the time they'll say, oh, no, no, I need to spend it with my sugar babe, or I need to travel abroad, you know, feeling elitist. In the end, they don't even understand governance. So the basic um, advertising um, taxations come from local government. We complain about such things. And you know, you can imagine your show, you put a billboard outside, you're gonna be facing local government. Um, you deal with in markets, we're facing local government. And nobody, and you know, it's so hard. If I asked, took 10 Nigerians, and I decided to ask, okay, so who's your local government chairman? 
Musa will not be able to answer it. And therein lies the problem. That's where I feel the problem. There's no attention to it. And I'll say Nigerians are so fixated on presidency. Yeah. All with, uh, it's even so shocking that heading towards February 25, I can, tell, I, I can tell you that everybody just knows, ah, I'm going to vote this guy for president. Okay, you vote this guy for president. Just say, the Senate? And, uh, and let's go, let's go locally li a little bit. They'll say, okay. And I send it anything to Abiko Biko, the same guy I voted for president down down the you line. Just go cross across the line. You know, today I was speaking somewhere at an event before I came here, and the person was like, "Oh, so you can vote different yeah. parties?" They didn't know that. I was I, I was highly I don't want to say <laughs> shook mm. <laughs> that someone could ask me that question. But how innocently she asked me, I knew she was not kidding. She actually assumed that if you vote give or take, let's say, let's just pick a party. Any one party, PPP. let's just say you PPP, have to keep which is not even. If I vote PPP at president, I must vote PPP at Governor. Uh, Senate, then mm -hmm. House of Rep. Mm -hmm. That's what, that? that's what that's what people mm, a lot told. of people so that's why you sure. see that even the campaigns are focused on the principal yeah. because they know mm. once they get people to vote, vote for the principal the, the, principal, yeah. the voting just goes stomp it. I used to be like that mm. but we have changed <laughs> <laughs> <New Year. laughs> let's go on a break when we come back from the break we'll continue the conversation stay with us All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we are discussing the state of the nation. We're focusing on Oshun governorship, and we're also focusing on local government autonomy. And we have Kulilawa with us. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Weisho, Africa one with the hashtag Weisho, please. The phone line for WhatsApp is for WhatsApp or text message only. Somebody has been trying to call persistently, but that's not a phone for to take calls. It's the call... Uh, sorry, the SMS and the WhatsApp line. Besides, calls are only on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we have our ladies' night out. All right, so, I mean, Kule, I, because I want us to quickly dovetail into the, you know, the governorship saga that happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to call it. They want to sack our dancing governor, the man that gives us <laughs> some moves online, right? Um, so, but I just want you to quickly touch on this. Like, if we try to sum it up, how do we... How do we, what's the best process? Because we've gone through now and it's not, it's, it's hitting a, a, a brick wall. What's the best process if we want to really fight for this autonomy? Should the people take up the fight? Okay, I think one of the first things we need to understand is that the local government do not have immunity. And this is something I think we've never really paid attention to. So you know that Etiosa ends 503 million. Etiosa probably has um, one or two healthcare centers, about three or four primary schools that are public owned. I don't think they have up to four, public owned. Remember that the jurisdiction of local government is primary education, primary health, which are healthcare centers. Mm -hmm. And you have 503 million a month. I don't think your Deki Expressway should look like, you know, something for a donkey cart mm. to be nice about it so 503 million you could decide to pick on this this month pick on that this month this is excluding internal generated revenue by the local government and we all know that ha radio tax this mm -hmm. one tax every tax and you're in etiosa mm -hmm. so i do not see how etiosa does not clock two billion every mm. month i do not see it so you have two billion every month what exactly is going do you on do here? With it? And I think what's key is that the citizens do not understand that these guys do not have immunity. So if they don't have immunity, it means they can be sued and they can sue. So it means that if you sue them, they will go to jail for doing what exactly is not being done. But you know. We rather take bigger pictures. Ah, you know what? Ah, this president, I don't like him, and that's the kind of argument we want to have. What is your basis? Yeah, I just don't like the president. It's not from my part of the country. This, that has nothing to do with you. The transformer, your your issues, the fact you don't have pipe bomb water in Etiosa. I'm sorry, I grew up in northern Nigeria. I kind of find that odd. Uh, but 
You don't have. Yeah, I went to inv I, my university as a damn please. No, no show sure. uh, <laughs> no, no, it's good you are saying this. I was saying to someone today that Kaduna State government, right? I think they are the one of the under under um, estimated or what do I call it? Yeah. You know, people don't understand what is going on there. Yes. There are some things that you worry about in Lagos that is just. I mean, it's a given there. Things no, are happening. No, no, no. no look know? at the figures. Since you mentioned Kaduna, look at the figures. You have Lagos probably generating about five something billion mm. uh, IGR in a year mm. and um, 25 million people. If you divide that, what do you have? Mm. Now you look at Kadna State, about the general population of less than four million, generating 120 something billion a month. Yes. So, but, so it's like, let me break this down for the viewers so that it doesn't sound complicated. It's like I'm, a, I'm, I'm working for Shell. I'm earning one million a month and I have 10 children. Then maybe I'm working for a, a, an advertising company. I'm earning 500K, but I have one child. Hmm. What I'll be able to do is far more. So Lagos lives under the hoax of we generate the most, but to what cost and what end? How many people do you have in your state? How, what infrastructure are and, you providing? And given that time? Lagos would have even been able to generate even much more. Hmm right and even with the little that you generate as a state how accountable how you know because again we we, we are the, the the entire state let's not even focus only on lagos state governance in nigeria is almost like you know a retirement plan it's almost like you know let me just it's free money my atm machines for when i'm because people don't see governance beyond just pockets yeah. and all of that because like you rightly said if i'm generating 500 million per month, right? Or I have a revenue of 500 million per month. Let's not even do too much. This month, let's focus on this. This month, let's focus on that. By the time your four year is elapsing, there is no part of the local government that you would not have touched. Yes, do you understand? If you truly, if the focus was truly on governance, but the focus has never been on governance. And again, I hear you. It is us, the people that have allowed it yeah. this long. Because now, if we start to sue them, and if we start to demand questions and ask them, what did you use this revenue for? How did you, you know, because again, most of these roads that you see being fixed are still being fixed by people. Because I know we also contributed money, you know, mm. to, to fix our own road. So where is the money that you were given for us as, you know, as a, a, a local government chairman? But, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's an interesting, okay, go ahead, so Gila. I think if well, if the topic is local government autonomy, mm. that's to say that they really do not have autonomy. So they can easily say that, well, we're not saying this money. This money is there. But we're not, it's not getting to us. That, you agree with that, I, I, I mean. No, no, let me explain. You see, this is where it gets interesting. So if they claim they don't have autonomy, that's not your problem. Mm -hmm. FAC allocations for, comes from federal to okay. the local government. How they use it or whoever takes it along the way, it's not your business. Mm. What is your business is that you have this social amount of money, mm. which is shown on FAC allocation sent to this particular local government. Defend what you used it for. Ah. It's very simple. But the people are, you know, trying to scamper mm. and say, mm. uh, maybe in some cases they'll say, ah, one governor took it. Fine. Even if the governor takes it, that's not your business. Mm. Hold the local government chairman and say, okay, guy. He said, we'll go hold He himself will. <laughs> <laughs> so when you hold him, mm. yeah. you will now say, governor, <laughs> even if I wanted to give you members, yeah. I can't. I will I can't. go jail. Yeah. You, you get immunity. I, I don't know, get. get. Mm. <laughs> Please, I beg. <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm that person. And that's how you start to get this, the system to work. So um, we kind of are expecting gov government to fight itself mm. over money it's gaining for itself. No, that's not, that's not going to, that's so it has to be happen. the people. But quickly, yes. quickly, let's move on to this Governor Daily case issue, right? Um, where are we with it? Is it going to appeal? And what's, what's, I mean, so can we even get to that point where I was watching a video where someone was saying that, can we not get to the point where we don't go to, what's it called, tribunal or this uh, <laughs> <laughs> election tribunal? Um, because <laughs> now, me, my real question in this question is what happens in 2023? Mm. Okay, so because um, this is almost like a pointer. Yes. Go ahead. And you know they say with change, of course, comes strife. Mm. So it's natural that you know the electoral act of 2022 has brought in beavers. 
Now, Beavers does a biometric um, identification yeah. that's added to your um, PVC before you vote. So in the situation of um, Austrian state, what happened is an overvoting this thing. Now you wonder, with the identification, mm -hmm. how did that happen? So Beavers, before the Electoral Act of, of um, 2022, the, usual the old Electoral Act stated once there were 5,000 voters registered in, let's say, waste polling units, mm -hmm. 5,000 voters in waste polling units, INEC was not concerned with what happened, except the voters exceed 5,000 5, voters. Yeah. But with the 2022 Electoral Act, and I, I need to state this thing so that we have a clear picture. If the 2022 Electoral Act is clear. What it says is, is the number of accredited voters that determine mm -hmm. what votes come from that polling unit. So in the case of Oshun, you had People are accredited, let's say in waste polling unit again, let's say 20 accredited. Meanwhile, the total voters are 50. And then the guys with the old game still decided to go behind the, the machine print. and mm -hmm. do the thumb print on mm -hmm. the ballot and get 50 because it's 50 that is mm -hmm. here. Eventually, when they check the beavers, it is over voting because the, it's only accredited, uh, accredited voters. So it's only people that they've checked their yeah. PVC, matched the biometric to themselves. End of story. So what they did was cancel 400 and so, 410 or 400 yeah. and something polling units. And then what was left when they did the math at the Lake was at a loss. But let's remember that this was taken by a court in um, Southwest. It's still subject to the Supreme Court's interpretation. So we wait for the Supreme Court finally. But wait, Okune. When we voted in 2015, we did the biometrics, though. Yes, but then the biometrics was not interacting oh, with yeah. INEC. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just to identify, uh, identify that you are the person. That yeah. was all. Oh. So it was on spot. So this can actually so work in the favor of people yes. that are willing to use their PVCs to elect it. So it's not really a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. where I was worried was okay. Somebody don't win, finish, you don't celebrate, you now go again, and then, you know, everything now changes, okay? It's not actually a bad thing. Mm. So, what is, what is showing is that there's the human element of corruption mm. still within our system. Mm. And no matter how you automate the system, but the good part with the, the fact that it's automated now is now you can detect the yeah. human errors and yeah and it yeah. cannot be altered so the the figures from the beavers cannot be no, tampered with mm. no so oh, accreditation wow. and you know it's so what it does when you when you check your so now apart from from 2015 that's post 2015 and Australia is the first time it was tested so after 2015 once you put in that this thing it relates directly to INEC and mm. relates back it checks the INEC server which means there's a hit so based on those hits it can calculate the number of accredited voters so oh, if wow. if you if you go to print the ballot after let's say i like the example i get 30 more people go dump it yeah it could take some time but when INEC pulls out its information it's you know that it's only 20 it's, people it it's accredited. Align. Yola, so instead of doing it's anything it will cancel well what INEC move is is that it cannot separate which 20 mm. on the this thing so INEC will cancel the entire polling unit mm. so what if the past governor, Oyetola, you know, what if he had just taken it in good faith? Okay, I didn't win, you know, Adeleke is the win. Because I think he challenged this, this no, result. That's why they went to the tribunal yeah, in the first place. You didn't hear last line. Wait, <laughs> make, wait. Because now I fear they catch me. <laughs> what if that party mm. uh, fake voters, or mm. let's call it extra voters, was the, the person uh, in, intention before? And so, for instance, I want to, I know Jola is going to win me, mm. the ghetto. Mm -hmm. I know Jola is going to win me in certain polling units. So I plant people to go and deliberately spoil those, um, this thing, and have excess people vote in, even in, in my favor. Ah. Because now what you are saying is that they have not checked the ballot paper to know who was not accredited. You understand? They are not comparing it with, with what, who actually voted. So what if that vote did not, it, it was not really my intention. I mean, it was my intention to actually use it to nullify knowing that she was going to win. Okay, so 
That's why we say it's still subject to interpretation from the Supreme ha. Court. Mm. So at the Supreme so Court, now, now the Supreme Court can't, of course, subpoena our neck on any mm. any of these, you know, related issues. And the Supreme Court can say, okay, you disqualify this polling unit here, X. Okay, give us the information you have for accredited. Mm. And only the Supreme Court can do that. Give us the information you have for accredited voters. Give us the information for total voters. We can see through. And once those two information is provided, you know who did what and how. Okay, so they'll be able to provide the yes, ballot papers yes. and all of that. that yes. yes. Oh, fantastic. Then we're good. So it yes, should be a we are. Yes. So, for me, so for me, it's, um, it's a minor glitch in where we're going to. Mm. Um, we've constantly done the things we are used to as yeah. Nigerians. Um, let's see how the system fights itself. Well, you know, um, the president has been fully clear that if there's anything he's going to do right, it's going to be election. anybody that wins the election free and fair, fair will get, will get the seat. Get yeah. seat. Okay. He's been he's been very strong on that, and awesome. I believe the president. On that. Well, I'm happy now because I was a bit worried <laughs> because <laughs> after we are done voting yeah. and somebody then so okay, so I get you. So they can pull out those information yeah. and now know but, where but, this. But remember, this was so based on jurisdiction. This was a high court, I think, somewhere. In but what Southwest. if again? Well, let me paint mm. scenario. What if I knew she was going to win and I planted those people to vote in her favor and they now pull out the results and they see that those extra accredited people that were non-accredited voted for her? That was the I will still no, fulfill remember, my purpose. No, you need to understand this. So, hey, so the, way, the way law and justice works, mm. you need to understand that um, they are blind. As much as in Nigeria, we try not to. So their business... It's, emo it's emotionless. Yes, mm. it's emotionless. So their business is only with those that were accredited yeah and those what those accredited, accredited people did oh any other thing so any it's other thing yeah it's okay so as box. long as they can match yeah, yeah, the yeah, accredited that, yeah. voters mm -hmm. to so, who they are yeah. who they voted for any other good. any other thing is your business okay, yeah. okay. they are not even concerned about it. it's, it's a waste of time <laughs> okay to i think we can layman yeah. any layman outside like yes. me you've understood the matter mm. all right so let's take some comments good evening my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying ways um Oshun, it says your guest made mention of people not knowing the names of their local government chairman which is very sad and unfortunate but they are um they are interested in good governance sister was said that in nigeria um their own understanding of true governance is caring for their own pockets without performance this alone is wrong i don't know why adela ademola adele case election was nullified um sister well, please try and stop waking up early <laughs> and get enough rest you need you need it thank you so much someone who is not agile cannot work effectively i'll be oh tanya Ilo, you don't understand we have to work while we are young <laughs> yeah so um this says um for me autonomy or no autonomy most of these governors control them by remote these governors ensure that they put in stooges, stooges. who can challenge them when the monthly allocations come from Abuja, these same governors dictate the disbursements. Unfortunately, the citizen's office is docile. Why are you not bothered that the legislation for creation of LG autonomy was rejected in the states? These LG chairmen are tied to the apron strings of, of Oga governors. Same with state houses of assembly. So whether the dancing governor wants the autonomy, he does not change anything. This is Austin from Delta. So, Kunle, <laughs> let's wrap up. <laughs> okay, so um, to answer Austin from Delta, Austin needs to understand one critical thing. So, regardless of what's going on, if um, they, they want to give the governors their money, no problem now. We sue you, you cannot defend it, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. They bring another person, the other one goes to jail. One of them will say, <laughs> <I know laughs> Enough is enough. I know they enough. <laughs> mm. True. So, we cannot expect governors to say, you know what, I love my people so much, I'm just about to give autonomy. It doesn't even have the power. So uh, the, the, the onus lies on the citizen to take, you know, drastic risks. We want to be America. Mm -hmm. We want to be UK. We want to Japan, be like Canada. But we've forgotten that this civilized society is putting a lot of work to be yeah. where they are. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, if, if I've gotten anything from the conversation tonight, it, it still tells us back to everything that the yeah, power lies with us, with us as the citizens. So it, you can do whatever you want to do there. 
as long as we are in power. And I like the fact that you kept on happening that these guys don't have autonomy. I mean, sorry, they don't have immunity. Mm. They don't have immunity, they don't have immunity. Meaning that if there's an allocation and there's something that's supposed to be done with that allocation, you and know, you can actually question them, you can sue them, you can take them to court. You know, I, I hopefully we'll be able to get it right because we are shouting. But we want I need, to, vote I need to add something. Presidency, we're not focusing on local I think, government. I think I need to add something here. So I know people want to say, ah, you want to sue them. Ah, you want to carry a Lagos state chairman to court in Lagos. Mm. You don't carry them to court in Lagos now. Abuja. Just report the, court, the case to EFCC and uh -huh. carry them to court in Abuja. <laughs> Those mm. ones are ready to, <laughs> they are ready to act. It's none of their business. Mm. So you play on such parameters. Citizens need to get wise. Yeah, we you don't need, need to, to be play the game. Uh, you don't need to play the game as predictable. Mm. So you can t I can just go and sue the man in, in Kafancha. Mm. That's all. <laughs> they will call you for Kafancha. <laughs> and you know AFCC, they are, they, are, they are very agile. They are always ready to... But, sir, but quickly, who, who protects the citizen? The ci because now, you know, these people have dogs they work with. Okay, so if I am a citizen in Lagos, and I want to sue, let's say, give or take. I don't want to use Etiosa again so that I look mm. like I'm attacking Etiosa. And I want to sue, let's say, uh, let's say I'm from... Just Cala anyone. anyone Calabar. Yeah. yeah. I'm from Calabar Municipal. So Calabar is municipal. So I want to, I want to sue Calabar Municipal. I'll carry the case to Abuja. Sue Calabar Municipal. Do I need to put my name on it? I don't. Okay. I can put... Uh, we have our progressive unions... Is it, not, is it not Nigeria? We have all those uh, unions. The only thing the unions do is to drink together on Saturday and, and, and uh, celebrate naming ceremony of <laughs> one member. We don't use it to do anything. True. It doesn't have to have a name tag. Hmm. So you can actually just anonymously sue them. Awesome. Of course, no. There shall be some suing that mm. will go on. But <laughs> thank you so much, Kunle. I think we've had a very educative Fantastic. conversation. Yeah. Every time I sit with you, I always learn more about the political space. Ah, for me, it's a uh, chill. That's why, uh, what did they call them? People that don't know what Kunle do, go online and go and follow, follow him because <laughs> he does a lot of uh, polytracy. That's what we call it. Thank That's very so important. Much. So Great. for me, it's the blue suit. It oh, kind of thank calms you. me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Share so that we can also, all these great conversations, more people can hear it. All right, um, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. The, there's love for country and there's governance. Only when they intersect can progress be achieved. And this was from our very own Kunle Lawal. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.